Before I can assemble the valve gear, I do need to finish off the valve spindles because when I turned them I didn't cut this slot here that is required for the packing. I didn't do that because I intend to fit O-rings and not only did I not have the O-rings at the time but I didn't really know what to do. But after a bit of time working with Google I do think I've now got enough of an understanding to get on with it. So I selected some very slightly oversized on the OD Viton O-rings and I'm going to cut a rectangular slot in the valve spindle for them to be located in. The depth of the slot will be slightly under the section of the O-rings and the width will be around about 20% bigger. When I turned the spindles I just used 8mm stainless bar rather than ground stainless bar. I'm hoping that won't prove to be an issue and that the O-ring will provide the necessary seal. If not it's no big job to make some new ones. To cut the slot I'll use an old parting off tool which I've ground down to 2mm width and then I apply some sharpie to help me find the workpiece. And then I finish off with some memory to remove the sharp edges. I apply some silicone grease before I fit the O-rings but unfortunately all you're going to get to see is the back of my hands because it was quite fiddly. I can confirm that once fitted the O-ring was providing enough of a seal to prevent me from blowing past it. Next on the list prior to actually assembling the valve gear is for me to make a decision as to how I'm going to deal with the pivot pins. I did eventually find this little comment on Don's drawings which aligns quite nicely to Bruce's suggestion a couple of videos ago that the pins be pressed into place. So that is what I'll do. So far and with one exception which we'll come back to later all the pivot pin holes I've drilled in the valve gear I've done so at 3mm which means they should all be very slightly undersized. But as I've been using 3mm silver steel pins along with my filing buttons I'm pretty sure most of the holes now have been forced out to 3mm. That aside I run a 3mm reamer through all of the holes that I want to be rotating around the pivot pins as opposed to those that I want the pivot pins pressed into. My third and final challenge prior to assembly of the valve gear is work holding in the lathe. As I called out a couple of videos back, I have been very limited in what I can do with small stock. To address that, I bought an ER16 collet chuck, turned a back plate, and also bought a set of ER16 collets. So I'm now good to go right down to half mil diameter. The first joint I tackle is the valve spindle to the combination lever. First I give the parts a good clean with acetone, then apply a good dollop of oil to the combination lever, fit the pin, and then I use a G-clamp to press the pin partially through, and when I'm comfortable it's passing through to the other side, I then finish this joint off in the vise. For the pins I'm using 3mm silver steel rod which I've turned to length in the lathe. Next I tackle the joint between the bottom of the combination lever and the union link. However this one is slightly different as the pin is not a press fit in the holes on the union link. So with a good coating of oil on the inside of the fork and the combination lever pivot hole I apply a little bit of Loctite to one side of the pin before I push it home. I am just using ordinary Loctite at this time. I think it would be rather naive of me to think I won't need to split these joints at some point in the near future. And if I use 648 it takes a lot more heat to break down. I also have to use Loctite on the joint between the combination lever and the radius rod. When I get to the joint between the radius rods and the expansion link die blocks 
I realised that when I made the die blocks I drilled the holes out at 3.2mm rather than 3mm, which is more than a little bit annoying. To get around this I've got three options. First I can make new die blocks, not really preferred because that's a lot of work. Secondly I can drill out the pivot pin holes in this end of the radius rod to 3.2mm and use a 3.2mm silver steel pin. That I don't particularly like because it means I've got two different sizes of pivot pins, which I will forget. Or the third option is to drill out the hole in the die block to say 4mm and then turn and fit a sleeve to bring it back down to 3mm. Running with option 3, the first job is to drill out the die blocks to 4mm and to do that I make this little jig. It's quite simple, just a block of mild steel with the section flattened off level with a slot drill and a 4.5mm hole drilled down through the middle. To position a die block so that the hole is directly below the centre of the quill, I use a bit of 1 8 silver steel bar held in the chuck. And then to secure the die block in position, I use some Loctite. And once the Loctite has gone off, I use a series of drills to bring the hole out to 4mm. Bog standard off the shelf Loctite really isn't that strong so I am going up with very small increments in drill sizes. And a bit of heat frees the block. Making the sleeves is a basic turning exercise, just at a much smaller size than I'm used to working, and it does give me a chance to play with my new collets. I'm pretty sure this is phosphor bronze. It does have the banding that one expects to see, but this particular piece has been knocking around in my stock cupboard for a long time and is filthy dirty. Having said that, now that I'm watching the video, I think it might be brass. Either way, it's what I'm using. The sleeve is round about half a mil longer than the block is wide, so once the 648 has gone off I will need to dress that back. And to ensure it has gone off properly I do leave it overnight. And that is how to make a small hole even smaller. I'm actually really pleased with the results here. With that out of the way I can now get back on with assembling the valve gear. Assembling this joint was particularly fiddly and an extra hand would have made a big difference. And in this view the die block is precariously balanced in the expansion link as we can see the G clamp really is an unwieldy tool for this and I really do need to make a specific tool. The final joint to assemble for this side is the one between the eccentric rod and the expansion link. This was a press fit so it didn't require any Loctite. Fitting this little bundle of parts along with the steam chest, motion plate and slide bars was fiddly to the extreme. Hopefully when I assemble the other side things will run a bit smoother and I'll be able to capture some video. But that will have to wait until next time. Thanks for watching.